You know, when you're a small YouTube creator, you sit around and you think, what videos can I make that is gonna grow my channel, that's gonna get a lot of attention? So today, I'm picking probably the most controversial topic there is. Sweet. Great decision. Has there been a bigger and more controversial story in sports this year than the NBA's current issue involving China and Hong Kong? Even in today's society, when sports and politics are more intertwined than ever, this situation feels more inflammatory than any since Kaepernick took a knee for the national anthem. Maybe that's just my bias because the situation is going on right now and it feels like such a big deal, but there's no arguing that across all of sports, as our world becomes more and more global and more countries have as much access to American sports as we do in the States, there's been some growing pains, to put it lightly. Whether it's the NBA's current battle with fans over China or the WWE's controversies over their shows in Saudi Arabia, fans are making it known that they don't want the leagues they support holding events in countries with oppressive governments. But this video is not about the politics of holding events in China or Saudi Arabia, and it's not about the validity of those regimes or their policies. I think we can all agree that as Americans, we can stand united against the communist regime in China or the oppressive regime in Saudi Arabia. Rather, with this video, I wanna draw attention to a part of this debate that we don't talk about very often. And maybe if we discuss this piece of the argument more, we can come to a fuller understanding of all of the ramifications of these types of issues. In this video, I wanna talk about the innocence in this whole situation, the fans. When we say the regimes in China and Saudi Arabia are oppressive, it's because they oppress the very same people that are turning up at the NBA games and the WWE events. So let's talk about the ramifications of big sports leagues holding events in countries like China and Saudi Arabia, and how, in our justified backlash to the governments of these countries, we might be forgetting the citizens of those countries. And let's start with the current situation involving the NBA in China, a controversy that has created more than its fair share of backlash. A lot of backlash. Even though you're probably already familiar with the whole situation, here's a quick primer on everything that's happened so far. It started when Houston Rockets GM Daryl Morey tweeted out a picture that read, Fight for Freedom, Stand with Hong Kong. The picture was in reference to the protests in Hong Kong and over a four month long battle that started when the Hong Kong government was set to sign a bill that would allow extradition of political prisoners to countries with which Hong Kong doesn't have an extradition agreement. Many believed this could be used to extradite prisoners to China, who, which would damage Hong Kong's autonomy. With China standing in strong opposition to these protests, Mori's tweet was not received well in the mainland. It doesn't help matters that Mori, like I said, is the GM of the Houston Rockets, the team Chinese megastar Yao Ming played for. Ming is probably the single biggest reason why China is the second biggest market for the NBA outside of the US. But of course, with the NBA understandably concerned about their business ventures in China, the league was less than eager to come to Daryl Morey's side. Morey himself even released a statement walking back the message of the picture. All of this has been met with severe backlash from the American public, who has spoken out against China's regime and the NBA's reluctance to condemn it. Which is a good way to transition into the WWE's own battles with its fans over its shows in Saudi Arabia which has also been in the news lately, as its Crown Jewel event takes place on Halloween 2019. The WWE held its first pay-per-view event in Jeddah in April of 2018, and its 2019 Crown Jewel event marks the fifth show in Saudi Arabia since then. The fan backlash hasn't revolved so much around the WWE's lack of comment on the Saudi government, rather it centers on what fans consider to be the cash grab nature of the shows that they hold there. The WWE often stacks its cards with ridiculous matches that wouldn't take place on any other show at all. So the fans, much like the NBA fans, are speaking out against the WWE holding events in a country with such an oppressive regime. So this is where we can get into the issue I really wanted to talk about with this video. Again, I can't stress enough, I don't want to discuss the politics in these countries or the politics involved in speaking out against them. 
I just want to discuss the seldom talked about third party in this room, the Chinese and Saudi Arabian fans that attend these events. And look, it's clear that they're massive fans of their respective sports. If you just watch any of these events, you can see that they have a real passion for this. And the fact that they don't get to watch it live, which we do, it just fuels that passion even more. And they look at the athletes and the teams and whatever else the same that we do. I mean, that's the thing. It's it's a big deal for them to, to, to get to see this. And you can see that in their actions and their reactions when these events are held. And they don't contribute to the policies of the governments in their countries. In fact, oftentimes they're the ones that feel the consequences of those governments. So you feel like if you move these NBA and WWE events outside of these countries, you're punishing those people. You know, I mean, just 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 um, just think about it. Are you punishing the the government or are you punishing the people who just want to see their favorite athletes and their favorite teams? At the end of the day, they just want to see their teams or their favorite wrestlers, something which we take for granted because all of the major NBA and WWE events happen in the United States, and they probably happen in cities that you live in. So it's something that's very easy to ignore and, and just not think about that we can take all that for granted these fans, this is the only time that they get to do this. And because of the really, really strict regulations when it comes to travel, when it comes to the censorship of these governments, they don't even get the opportunity so much to come here and see them, even if they have the money to do so. All of the major sports leagues around the world have taken steps to become more global. And it's been all about the fans not about the government of the countries they end up in. So when the NFL plays a game in Mexico City, which they've started doing over the last couple seasons, it doesn't ignite a debate about the Mexican government, you know, or the, or the corruption or the involvement of the cartels or, or anything like that. I'm not saying that it shouldn't. I'm just saying that oftentimes when it's about, when it's about the leagues moving countries, it's about the fans that they're that they're pleasing in those countries, the fans that get to watch the teams and the athletes they love, not about the government. Okay, but this all sounds like I'm justifying leagues holding events in countries with oppressive governments. Like I said, I, I don't wanna get into that. I just wanna consider all the possibilities in these arguments. And when I watch NBA games in China or WWE events in Saudi Arabia, I just see fans that are wildly passionate. And when you think about it, sports are for the fans, right? It's not like they're having events for government personnel only. So like I said before, consider who the NBA and WWE would really be hurting if they moved their events out of these countries. I just don't think it would be the government. But if you believe that by moving the events out of these countries, it would convince the people to do something about the regimes they live under, that's cool. If you believe that American businesses shouldn't be doing any business with these countries at all because of the regimes that govern them, that's cool too. I keep saying it because I want to be really clear. This video is not designed to say you're right or wrong about anything you believe when it comes to these issues. I just want to draw some attention to an issue that's been on my mind for a while. And maybe by looking at more context when it comes to these kinds of controversies, we can all have more meaningful discussions about how to create change in the world.